Good morning, everybody. Okay, I am coming to you on time, live from the Columbia Gorge, because I'm on a little road trip here, so let's ask Michael if he wants to join us. It's funny when it pops up people that you like, no, they do not. Here we go. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Stephanie, Whitney. Hi, hi, hi. What's on your mind this morning? Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm um, pretty good. The gang's all here this morning. Well, maybe not everybody, but. They're trickling in as they wake up and get their coffee. <laughs> That's right. Depending on where they are. How we many? Be like. Yeah. Hours, half a day. <laughs> yeah. Why? Tom. Tommy. Tom's down there. Yeah. Uh, Val. Wonder how many folks out your way are up at this hour partaking in this conversation. Yeah. S say who's, uh, you guys, who's, who's on Pacific Standard Time? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> who's up this early? <laughs> Good, oh, morning. Jo Good morning, Jody. Nice. All right. So what's going on with you? What's the temperature? It got warm here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, we had a dense fog this morning, which is the first fog of the season. It's kind of cool to wake up to that. Right. But, you know, I start every morning in a sweater and it gets pretty warm by midday. So it's nice. It's a good time of year. Actually, uh, wrote a letter to all of our boarders last night, and I was just celebrating spring in my whole first paragraph. It's like green grass, sunshine, horses looking sleek. You know, it's it's a good time of year. Definitely. Um, have you heard the connection between an itchy belly and rubbing out the tail? No. Okay, so this is something that Debbie Driesner – you know, my friend Debbie from Mustangs and More. Um, she told me this, like, maybe, maybe, maybe two years ago at the most. Like, I heard this really recently. So I was really struggling with, you know, my horses rubbing the dock with their tail, right? I was like, and, and some, and I, you know, they're wormed. It's fine. You know, I make sure the fly spray's on there and all the, well, she goes, she, she just said, look, if you're not fly spraying the belly line, and they have an itchy belly, like either right in the cinch area or right, you know, uh -huh. back, and they can't itch it, they're going to itch their tail. I'm like, I'm kidding. really? She's like, yeah, as if that makes as total if, like, As if it makes sense and she's known it since childhood, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it totally works. Like, okay. so long as I keep the fly spray on the belly, um, it, they... They have beautiful tails last year. So the, what made me think of it is spring, the flies, we have a super um, w way warmer, you know, and drier than we yeah. have, in, I don't know, 100 years or something here. And uh, so we definitely have the flies out. So Maggie's rubbing the dock of her tail the other day. I'm like, stop doing that. <laughs> and um, I checked her belly line. Sure enough, she's already got the bites. Anyway, I told I'll, Debbie, I'll I'm like, keep that in mind. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think I've had horses since I was 12. Yeah. <laughs> no one told me that. <laughs> so who all is uh, Margie? Oh, my gosh. Margie from California. Is it Rob? No, it's Rob. Hi, Rob. Do you know Rob McGrew? I don't. Oh, my God. He's one of my he doesn't know it. Probably. There's Flora. I know Flora. Well, I know Flora. Wait, too, who's, yeah. who's Rob? Rob McGrew is Margie McGrew, so she's a pearly friend um, from okay. a long, long time ago, but they're um, in the Red Bluff area of California, but Rob is a, um, he owns an insurance business and is, does an amazing business by referral, um, by referral only, I'm pretty sure, and uh, yeah, he doesn't know that he's a business mentor of mine, but he is. <laughs> he Sorry. drove... I have this industrial copier, you know, the $30,000 copier, right? Uh-huh. 
because he gave it to me. Like, he, he has a copy machine company and he drove it to me from Texas and I love it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I can't so, imagine. I wouldn't know what to do with a 30. Oh man, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So anybody who gets a letter from me for my real estate business or, you know, you'll be getting them from Horsemanship Insider, it's on Rob's copy machine. Nice. Yeah. Well, all right. Chief, Chief is doing awesome. Oh. My, my daughter, who's just turning five, loves him. He, he, uh, they go out on the trails, still have a lead line for that, but they'll tool around the arena on their own. Um, she was for a while, I didn't give her a saddle and she'd just pop around single rope, tossing it over his head like she's starting a colt. That was my favorite. But now she insists she needs a saddle and she wants both reins. So I held off letting her even experience that. So that was my favorite stage. But yeah, they're doing great. They're having a ton of fun. It's so funny. She'll be leading him around, around and she's like, I want to go see Papa. And I, uh, I'm like, well, walk up the driveway, you know, because he likes to dive for grass and she's only five years old. And it doesn't, she goes, no, I'm just going to go fast. And she goes running up the yard through, you know, across the grass, just tooling up there. So Chief doesn't have time to dive and grab a bite of grass because it's pretty hard to get him up once he gets his head down there, given her size. She's a pretty little one. So I, that was hilarious. But yeah, they're doing good. They're having fun. Tell, tell tell the people who Chief is. Oh, yeah. Chief is a little pony that um, Flora and Clem grew up riding. Um, they were at a bunch of Spanaway clinics in, in Dayton. And uh, I had my eye on Chief for my kids from long before they had grown out of him. So I was like, I'm on the list, top of the list. And I'd remind them every year. So, um, so yeah, I... I got Chief when they grew out of him, and, and the kids are enjoying him. So, Well, at least Lydia is. Levi hasn't shown much interest in the horses, so we'll see if that changes as he gets older. But That's so cool. I was thinking about Chief the other day. So when Flora, for those of you guys that um, watched the show with Flora Benninger, um, she is 16 now, but we met her when she was like 11. No, younger than that. I don't know if she told me, I can't remember, but, but whatever, eight years ago or something. And um, so she was riding this little, I don't even know what he is. He, he's probably Shetland. I don't yeah, know. a little spotted Shetland pony. Yeah. And just doing such an awesome job. So um, Beth Weaver and I were talking about Chief uh, eight, nine. She was nine. Um, we were talking about Chief. Um, hey, hey. Mary Lou. Mary Lou says hello. Mary Lou says hello. <laughs> and I saw Peggy. Good morning, Peggy. Um, so Chief, the thing, the cool thing about those horses that are just so amazing. I mean, Chief taught Flora, and then Flora, you might not know this, but um, I was watching you coach Clem, her her little brother, um, on Chief. Do you remember that? I think you were there, Michael. We were watching Flora. And, you know, so she's, she's walking around like this in the, it was in Dayton, you know, very seriously watching Clem because it was like his first clinic with Buck or something, you know, and so she's doing the coach's thing and just super relaxed, super chill and like focused. And here's this like, you know, 12 year old kid. I'm like, Ooh, coach of the future. <laughs> so talking about those horses that we have to keep custody of somehow throughout the years as we all kind of share that horse, you know, through, through the children, that's the horse that's going to live forever. How old is Chief? Do you think? Uh, 20. Flora is going to know maybe more than I, I think he's around 20. Yeah. 20, yes. maybe 21. I and think. he'll probably live, he'll be useful another 15 years or something no. like 10 years, you know, at yeah. least. Um, and then tiny. So that little 25. baby horse. Okay. 25 okay ish she doesn't know either um yeah so but 25 older than we even thought so tiny is like three that little one that that clem's riding now mm -hmm. what are we gonna like she's gonna live till we're like 80 yeah that's crazy. so it's like we should have this list of children you know <laughs> that that kind 
when a person takes custody of a tiny horse like that, like cheaper, yeah. what are you going to do with him when Lydia and Levi are grown? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Who, so. who, has, who knows uh, who has kids at that point that are, I don't even know. You yeah. Know. Well, that's Clem, why. I'm... Clem's weighing in. Clem says he's 21. Is Clem watching? Oh my gosh. Such a huge Clem fan. Yes. I, I told Clem the other day, well, last year at Dayton, I was like, okay, you just remember someday people are going to really look up to you and just remember that kindness is the most important thing because he's so sweet right now, you know, like just never forget that when everyone's watching you for leadership, you know? Yeah. yeah. Humble, humble leadership, humble but confident leadership, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a lot of responsibility at a certain mm -hmm. point, you know, especially when you, as a young man, you can speak to this, I suppose, as a young man, having, having sort of middle-aged women, you know, looking to you for, for guidance, there's, there's gotta be a little bit of a discomfort in that, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I got into the horse deal as far as professionally, I wasn't as young, I mean, I wasn't old yet okay. but <laughs> I wasn't <clears throat> I didn't grow up doing it since I was eight like Clem I mean I, I, I've been riding since I was a little kid but you know I had a whole whole career practically before I jumped back into the horse thing and and really dedicated myself to it so but yeah it's uh even even now like when I'm working with people there's a certain humility that kind of comes over you like thank you for trusting me to like help direct your journey or or um speak into your journey so yeah it's pretty you know it's nice you know mm -hmm. there's been a lot of people over the years that have appreciated it and you know i to completely heartfelt to appreciate them and because uh, it, it makes possible what I'm able to do and giving me lots of opportunities so for sure I yeah guess. we were hanging out at my parents uh, last week um, and uh, I was just kind of talking about the show and you know the future of whatever I'm doing and so we were talking back and forth and dad goes it's impressive how important horses are to people. <laughs> he goes, I really, yeah, like he was just like, you know, thinking about it in, ter in terms of the depth uh, of it. And so then when you can become a part of somebody's, you know, experience like that, it's, it's, a, it's a serious deal. Um, no. Oh, I sure enjoyed Lou. I remember the, I don't remember what the farm was, but it, uh, we were talking, uh, with Sherry about, um, her horse Lou. And, uh, there was one lesson where we talked about a few different things. And one of them was the horse being kind of, um, shut down, like uh, obedient, but, but not really engaged. And we were also talking about her being spooky and um, yeah, that was a fun lesson. I don't know if you remember that one, but anyway, memories. All right. What's on your mind? I was out week? in Virginia. Uh, what's on my mind this week? I don't know. Yesterday I was on day four, maybe a really, um, work in short serpentines that was memorable both for you too that's good uh i was really working short serpentines with this mare um, real just worried about everything um you'll get her get her settled on the ground and first time i got on her it was like off to the races everything was go and um you know i knew you know, obviously didn't just try to hold her back. We were in the round crowd and it's just, all right, let's go.
go lope around for a while you're you're safe let's just let you move because i'm sure that hasn't been part of your experience and uh <clears throat> Is she still has that, okay, I'm settled on the ground. I'll let you get on without me moving off, but I can't be here long. And then everything inside of me is like, got to move, got to move, got to move, got to move. And uh, what really um, has been interesting about her is her ribs are so sprung to the right that you're like constantly tipping off the left side and like readjusting your saddle and, you know, like having to step in that left stirrup and bring yourself, you're not even on her backbone anymore. You're on her right ribs trying to stay in the middle of her. So I'm like, well, <clears throat> you know, I've got things going pretty well on the ground. She's pretty even reaching left and right. I've got a bit of a hind quarters, four quarters. Um, you know, there's, there's not a real turning loose yet through the neck in terms of just flowing side to side. Let's do some short serpentines. And I was at it for a while because she was still in that it was early in the ride and she was still in that I gotta move gotta move mentality um that she kind of clicks into when you get in the saddle and so I started doing short serpentines and it took a long while that first time but at one point it was like pop I was just like not struggling to stay in the middle of her anymore and the ribs had opened up left and right pretty evenly and uh it was like aha now we're now we're opening up on uh on the the right side like we like we need to and uh was she like <sighs> yeah i'm it wasn't it wasn't a let me stop and relax just immediately but she did soften so much through her movement she was still needing to move um and then she'd get worried and i'd feel that kind of rib cage bow out a little bit more um, you know, and then we, cause I'd like, she kind of settled and let her just kind of drift off on a straight line and she'd be a little bit softer and then, Oh no, what about that? And so, and then you go right back. And so, so over the course of, you know, three, four days now it's, um, you know, she'll, she's finding the freedom through the rib cage a lot more. And, um, <clears throat> She's not starting out so crooked like that or so, you know, I guess it's crooked, um, but still will kind of default there when she gets tight. If she's got a lot of uh, connection to the other horses. So I've done the divorce a few times and, um, you know, even that is like, you know, I, it's, a, it's been a very effective way of getting her to, disconnect from the other horses but there's so much discomfort for her in that that <clears throat> you know I've, I've been thinking with her like how how because when i go on such a, a switch changes that she's like okay this is somewhere to be worried it's not like she's bucked me off or run off but there's just this engine churning feeling um you know i kind of wonder how long does it take to like let's say today it takes 10 minutes for her to kind of let down from that the other day it took 20 minutes whatever today it takes next day it takes five and then we have to do that six times during the ride because, you know, she gets all churned up at the next distraction or her buddy whinnies or whatever. Um, <clears throat> how much time are we, I don't want to say practicing, but that's the way it kind of comes across to me. How much time, even now while we're trying to do right and settle the horse, are we practicing what she's already believes to be true about riding? And that is, this kind of churned up anxious feeling. Um, and, but yet you can't short circuit it. You can't be like, Hey, knock it off and hold her in. Like it's been done to her. I mean, that's, that's how she ended up in this place. But um, I'll even think that doing groundwork is like when it takes a good while for the horse to let down or maybe even consecutively, 
like let's say um i have another mare that's just very very um reactive this other um she's more gonna jump out of her skin sort of thing um and flinchy and tight um so initially it was like well there was a change we've let down a little but we're not there going <sighs> you know totally turn loose head down we've been at this for a good long while like i said we've got to change you're not trying to race away from the flag you're not scrambling you're not jumping sideways you're kind of letting me move it around you and are we then practicing not like being tense about the flag because she probably never experienced the flag before but when i brought it into the picture it was going to kill her so have we just even though we're in a better place practiced being concerned about that flag on some level because or, you're not all the way let down yeah, yeah. And it's like oh i know what's possible like i know how yeah. i want your body to feel i know how you want yeah. you to, i want you to look and feel about this um i know the expression i'm looking for and it's just not there i mean this this mare's back was so rock hard from the withers all the way to the tail. You couldn't, there was no give in there in the muscle at all. It was just like a rock. And, you know, first couple of days, I could set the flag down and just kind of go to petting on her, which that alone would have her flinching. And it was, her back was still quite tight, but she was standing there a little bit more. So I don't know. I've, I've thought about that a lot for a while. I don't know. What do you think? is that something you think about in the in the process of <laughs> well it's a great question i what, what it makes me think about is stuff like um you know having a saddling issue or a bridling issue that is pretty extreme mm -hmm. and takes you know you can either drill it which i've done I mean, like mm -hmm. i know this is how i want it to be or you just kind of do it with quality yeah you just kind of do it with quality and it seems to me that the horse will find will naturally um get better yeah you know over over time so it makes sense you, you know what you're saying in in the sense that you do, you don't want it to i guess i think of like is it three, four, five times in a row that like no progress has been made? Or is every single time a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better? And mm -hmm. I think maybe usually four sessions uh, is, if nothing's changed in that amount well, of time. But even there, if, if, if not that nothing's changed, but let's say, you know, like for instance, this mare in saddling is another where she's, you know, head very high. She can be pretty turned loose and relaxed at this point, but the saddling is still that kind of tense thing. Um, you know, and I don't know that that's gotten that much better, but, you know, in the process of getting her to get more and more turned loose, it would get better, but it was so incremental. I mean, you couldn't say, you know, four days and now we're, well, now we're there, we're turning loose completely. You no, know? but it just but so long as something has changed. If something has changed. Yeah. But it, yeah. it, it's, un, it's uncomfortable to trust the process, even though you know the process, <laughs> the process has worked for you. Um, you know, you kind of, you know this horse in the sense that you've worked with horses of this category like some horses you just get them in the round corral and you're like i kind of know what's coming here i know exactly how many minutes this is gonna take yeah. about <laughs> usually <Are> you... <clears throat> yeah you just can you know what you're gonna need to work on before you even kind of check that out um you know you can see what what's yeah, you can kind of see what the process is going to look like before you even get very far into the process. But, um, you know, it, it's tough to trust that process when the change is so incremental. And and I do always have the question, like, am I 
in not having you turn loose completely. Well, this is the way to say it. Are you turned loose enough? Is there a big enough change that this feels better enough to you that it's going to give me a gain for tomorrow? That you've or, been recorded for it. Yeah. So yeah. you will do more of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, because they, you know, they might still be pretty tight and leery of things. So it's like, is this really peace? You know, I mean, did we get close enough to something that feels good that, you know, you'll be on but the But that's for? that data collection thing a little bit, right? Yeah. Like yeah. where sometimes the horse can just make microscopic changes in a day, I feel like, like when you're with them. Mm -hmm. But if you've presented it, if I've presented it in a way that is – uh matter of fact sure in myself mm -hmm. and consistent then the horse even if it takes a few days but usually overnight they'll think about right mm -hmm. and and then if you can if if that can if i can present it similarly every single day i feel like a lot of times that's the data collection yep. will just add up to suddenly they'll be like, well, I can count on. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that mare that's, that's kind of uh, fuzzed up on the short serpentine. How is her, you said her ground was pretty good, but how's her seat connection on the ground? Like she really connected to you walk, drop camera. No. no, I mean, it gets there, you know, she'll, she'll turn loose um, quite nicely on the ground. But again, anything, you know, another horse whinnies and, you know, whoop, you know, so, um, you know, and just speed has troubled her. So you ask, ask for a trot or you did, and it, it would kind of escalate things. Um, <clears throat> not as much loose in the round corral, but on, on the end of the lead rope, she'd have more trouble. Um, maybe wouldn't as much if I had a longer lead rope, but I don't usually grab a lariat and do much of that. I do it loose in the round corral, but, um, yeah, it, it, it's much better than in the saddle. I mean, the divorce has really helped, um, the connection from the saddle, but, um, yeah, everything's just scattered and, and, you know, you think about it, if your ribs are stuck, you know, you try to do your hindquarters, forequarters, and it's just hard to get your feet to do it, you know. Um, so are you doing leg heels on the ground right to left mm -hmm. as well? Uh, right to left, yeah. I mean, I'm doing lots of yield the hindquarters, send on forward, yield the hindquarters, send on forward. And that at first is kind of wooden and stabby um, and gets there as soon as she gets worried again. But... Um, yeah, you know, just waiting for that that arc to turn loose and it to just flow sideways and then send her forward. Um, you know, in terms of a drift, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't done as much drifting. More just roll the hindquarters around. Yeah, and I would almost think too, like for if the ribs are really stuck to the right, at some point it has to, in order for that to pop out to the left, the leg yield right to left has to become more of a leg yield that's connected to the front feet. But that's challenging, of course, if she's not going to follow you forward into the bend because, because, you know, she could be, um, she could be pretty uh, speedy sideways. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Mm hmm like you don't want her escaping to the left yeah. but yeah. i think that and tell me if this is, applies to her but it seems to me like that a horse that is really um that has their ribs stuck to the right so they're much more comfortable looking left if mm -hmm. you are on their right side they you, first of all you better make sure you do have the hindquarters so that <laughs> because she's gonna want to look left when something freaks her out right mm -hmm. <laughs> right yeah. she's gonna want to look left if something freaks her right. out, correct? <laughs> yes. Left, right, right, left. Who's on so, first? Yeah. 
so then sometimes I guess mm -hmm. all that I'm thinking of is is when the drift that you got to turn it into a leg yield right to left so that she can really feel um like steady and kind of grounded over her left front foot so that she can turn and look to the right. Yeah. Um, and with her, it's been a lot more, um, which is kind of the same thing, or at least a more rudimentary version of that is stay forward in the hindquarter yield because she wants to just kind of She's so stiff, she just wants to kind of fling that hindquarters around and plant a front foot or or just at least, you know, get get really short and choppy in front. So it's been open that up. Um, you know, to me, it's just kind of what I've been watching a lot is um, the pole and kind of there almost being a soft feel coming into your lateral flexion, not just... You know, and it, that that kind of happens micro amounts of almost immediately of them turning loose to that bend around you in the pole. Um, <clears throat> but with her, it's been you know the, there was there begin to be a turning loose, but when she really opens up, and that's probably what you're you're talking about. I'd have to think about how that affects the balance to the left front foot. Um, but when she really opens up is when everything kind of is fluid, um, that opening up in the pole and kind of rolling the jaw um, really up underneath, not just to the, to the left, but to the left and in. So. Yeah, what, right, because like obviously there's a contraction there at the right shoulder. Mm -hmm. so, so there has to, meaning like, and we're looking backwards here of the camera, but if like, if she's kind of bent this way and her ribs are kind of stuck out, you know, there has to be a way to spread her out across the ground. Mm -hmm. Right? Or yeah, yeah even whether you're sitting on her or standing next to her, that's tricky. And, mm -hmm. and like we were talking about the, the other day, all the ingredients that, that you need to have and of course that's coming together as at when once you get your hands on a horse and go through a couple different sessions mm -hmm. like that all the little things you know are you connected to me on the ground front to back are you connected to me on the ground laterally um but what a cool thing to to, to be on a horse that's so obvious yeah that you could feel it just go and again we're doing it backwards but you can feel it just go <laughs> that's cool which way are you looking right now? I'm looking to the right. Yeah, but it looks to me like you're looking to the left. Because you... it's a reflection. I know. Look to the right, though. If I look to the right? Okay, yeah, it looks like you're looking to the left. Okay. To the left, yeah. <laughs> but mirrors, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. We know, our, we know our rights and left, guys. Usually. Yes. <laughs> So, so it's uh, what a, I love those horses that are that are so obvious on something like yeah. that, because because Definitely. those are the ones I feel like then can show me how how to feel for the subtleties in another yeah. one. Yeah, it it uh, it's like okay that that's the yes. change I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, I remember you know certain horses that really. Um, very naturally sat down behind when I was first feeling, feeling for that. I was like, ah, I just don't feel that, that tuck in, you know, small movements. And then like Degamo is one of them where, you know, you wouldn't even have to, you know, stop hard or really, you know, sit him back hard on a turnaround. You just really felt in all of his movements, the pelvis rotate more than you would another horse. Um, cause it's just natural to him. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of clutch as you would say. Clutch so. AF is what I usually say. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> when I, when I find myself saying that I'm like, that's just not my word. <laughs> you can use my word. 
No, but it if it, it feels weird. I'll let <laughs> your word. <laughs> it is the it's I need a to come up with word. It's exactly what I mean when I say it. I need to come up with my mm-hmm. own word that means clutch but is not clutch. <laughs> Why? Are you too good for my word? I don't know. It just feels awkward. Heaven forbid you say something I said. <laughs> <laughs> so, wish, the other one is curriculum like there's a few a few of your words that's just like i don't have a better word which okay maybe i'm too good for your word <laughs> i don't have a better word but it's hard to say that word isn't it but isn't it so funny it's I like people are like to the use of the word isn't curriculum mr harvard isn't yeah. curriculum it is the right word it right is a very good word yes yeah. well it sounds, why don't I, why do I brace against it a little bit? It sounds. Kip's commenting. It sounds what? Harvard. Harvard. He oh, said yeah. it sounds too Harvard. Sounds too academic. There's <laughs> but, more feel but involved. that's the whole point. Yeah. yeah it, well, I think it's. I always feel like I need to explain to a degree when I'm teaching, that this is a curriculum, yet the important part is the adjustment and the feel you present is going to be different. Yes, sounds more rigid. It sounds like here is the the formula, and if you don't emphasize, and this is back to our conversation about you know, who are we talking with about it? But if you don't eff- emphasize the fact that the feel is going to change for each individual horse, for each individual moment, curriculum comes across. If you're just hearing that word as this is what you do with every horse. Yeah. Like Tom is saying there, you know, the horses need. So like guess, they're they're all validating my fact that curriculum right, 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 and it's a good a this, certain rigidity. Yes, and this thank is you a, Sherry and Tom. Yes, thank you guys because that's absolutely kind of what I mean by curriculum. That that is exactly what I mean because obviously feel and obviously yeah. appreciation and obviously joy and all, all those things like to me go without saying but the curriculum is I do mean a rigidity of that because when I say that or this is this is that is the rigid part that I'm talking yeah. about is that so, you have a certain okay <laughs> she's like yeah so but here on that it's the framework the you know the element that is has a measure of uh, structure you can say it's rigidity whatever um the the more let's just say you know what you and i have spent a lot of time pursuing is the the framework or the list or the curriculum that that buck shares that buck presents the more you get into it, the more you realize how critical each element is to the other and how it really is a, a full picture. Of course, feel the adjustment to each horse is going to be there, but it's like, okay, that's why this is so important. And it all ties into that. And, you know, you know the and, further and along, those- yeah, whoa, whoa. You better look at that before it disappears. I like who's saying this. I don't know. There's a plan. Angles. You read it. About <laughs> you read it, and I'm gonna talk for a second because okay. because here's the thing, and I'm so glad. I love that the the that the that the objection could be the rigidity of it, but but that is exactly, um, I think the beauty of what Tom Dorrance seems to have passed down the line it's like these are these are elements that exist in nature and are pretty pretty unchanging you know um lateral harmony left and right um 
you, you know, an element of uh, mm -hmm. being in the middle, front to back, you know, and mirroring someone, um, uh, a proper hindquarter yield, a proper forequarter yield, like, to me, all of those things, you cannot, you cannot take those out and end up, you know, with a, with a complete horse. Oh, no. What is everyone saying? I know. They're all saying curriculum is good and you need to have fluidity and adjustability within your pedagogy. That was Peggy. Pe oh, yeah. Peggy's so smart. <laughs> so, of course Peggy would say that and Val said I completely I agree with Peggy um yeah I mean it sounds like um because as you're talking curriculum is resonating with people and it's maybe just like you're saying well the feel and you know adjustability is a given right but I, yeah. I think and you and know, the way that you present it or the way that you stack yes. the blocks yes um is not cannot be rigid i i yeah. don't think right but yeah. but until you get to the to, to finishing those yeah. there's going to be the way i often explain it the way i think about it is i'm i'm going to want my horse to do all of this all of my horses to do the same thing the same movements seeking for the same balance over you know, this leg, that leg, the same depth of flexion, the same reach, with, relatively. I mean, some horses, you're, you're going to get more out of them than others. But I'm, to the extent that it is, um, I'm bringing out the fullest from any given horse, I'm asking for the same movements, but my presentation of them, my teaching the curriculum yeah. is going to be tailored to each given horse that moment, that level of distraction, whatever, all the things we just talked about with, you know, a couple and, of minutes. And to me, if, if we, when I think about the curriculum as like the skeleton that you hang everything on, then that actually makes me feel freer and more fluid because, because those are the commons. Like that, those are you know, the, the building blocks. And then every horse is going to manifest those in a different way, right? Like, like that will come out in a different way. For, a hard stop is going to look different on one horse than it is on another horse. Um, and uh, that's a terrible example of the curriculum. <laughs> but but um, whatever it is, is going is going to end up manifesting itself differently and the way that they learn it will be different mm -hmm. every, every single horse um and that frees me up to be like okay look that is how a flying change looks for this horse <laughs> you know vivian's flying change is never going to look like zoro's it's mm. just not yeah <laughs> you know she still has a better passage than he does <laughs> but but why you know, because hers is more engaged and hers is 90% of what he can do. 90% mm -hmm. of what she can do, which is maybe 10% of what, what he can do. Right. Sure. So. Is that Lauren? I guess it, it gives me more freedom is all I'm saying. It, it, it It's yeah. funny because I wouldn't have thought of that if you guys hadn't brought that up. And I love that because I definitely was not, I was just taking the, the, the rest of it for granted. Yeah. But that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because the, I, in other words, so all we're saying is the curriculum is rigid in that there are certain things that um, a horse, as far as I can tell, there are certain immutable things that a horse needs to know no matter what we do with them, either on the ground or riding. And a flying change is not one of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> probably put the caveat in there to accomplish what we're looking to accomplish or to create. Um, but doesn't a horse have to have to not run over the top of you? Don't they have to yield the four quarters and yield the hind quarters? And they, you know, they have to be. Yes and yes and yes. 
but like let's say the degree of flexion, the <clears throat> degree of balance over the hind end, the degree of engagement or the, the type of engagement <clears throat> that you're going to get on say a cutting horse having just done the clinic with Doug, you know, he does not emphasize depth of flexion the way Buck does. He is not, um, he, he's not talking to the feet in the sense of directing every foot. He's really just letting the cow do it all. And it, the, the movements end up looking different. And because the cow is <clears throat> kind of directing the dance, um, you know, his horse is handy enough to go, um, you know, open a gate and go trot across the pasture and be with you. I mean, he, he gets his horse settled and, you know, with him, not just with the cow, but the, you know, he's not working leg yields. He's not, you know, even though he can step off a cow, it, it has to yield to the four quarters. I mean, I don't know. It's just different. So, is <clears throat> the curriculum as we're thinking of it critical to what we're doing and useful everywhere else? I would say absolutely. Is it critical to every discipline in its whole? I, yeah, I know. I get what you're saying and I, I, I agree. I see what you're saying too. I yeah. see what you're saying too. I, it's, would you consider depth of flexion as, as something on the curriculum? Well, yeah, I think most, I do not think most, um, most training scales look for the depth of flexion that, and the, the balance over the hind end that's, you know, that's a quality though. Would you say that that's a curriculum element? I don't know, maybe. Well, to me, it's part of the <laughs> curriculum. You guys, Kip's not usually with me <laughs> because he's at work. You know when I do he's So he's with me in the hotel room and his running commentary is Okay, what's, what's his running commentary? He's like, it is part of the curriculum. <laughs> like, Kip, Kip even agrees. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kip. Yeah, my whole So okay, look at this, Emma. We got Sherry, Tommy, <laughs> Eggy. All of them are saying I got a point. Kip saying I got a point. <laughs> Maybe I got a point. <laughs> you have a point too. I'm just questioning the details. I know, I know. You're, you're saying... I'm okay, gonna... okay, listen, me... mister. Okay. When Buck Brandman rides around and he's like, here are the things you need before you move from the snapple bit stage, he never says depth of flexion. But he says... I, yeah. I, but yeah. he says with quality. Yeah. He says, bend them more. Keep your ears level. That's curriculum. <laughs> bend <laughs> them more. Keep your ears level. That's curriculum. That's curriculum. <laughs> I'm crying now. Yeah. Oh, Kip, I miss hanging out. I don't see you guys as much as I used to. It's just too much fun. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. That's the issue because the co that's the with the concept of curriculum. Oh, shit. Yeah. I, I hate the fact that I can't. Okay. And then, oh, uh, look, I can scroll. But Whitney, I don't see your comment on there. So maybe try it again. What is he saying? Yeah, look at all the different headsets and the different show. Right, bands. right. Yeah. Okay, so just to be fair, Michael and I's um, definition, I think, is a little bit is different in the sense that, um, or the way I was thinking of it anyway, mm -hmm. is is the curriculum is the bare bones things, and then uh, like the way that you might apply something yeah. to any any different body style or emotional state that a horse is in or who knows, a change of environment or whatever, the all job, of those. The job you're me, doing. Yeah, to me, that's a given. And But when we have talked about curriculum, it's, I think, when, when we're talking about 
checking a horse out to move on to something else or um you know maybe if they are having trouble with something like going back and looking through the fundamentals mm -hmm. you know and looking through like okay what are are is there anything that's not fitting together right yeah. so if you're having trouble with your your can of pirouettes or just loping a confident loose rein canter circle you could go back to another piece of the curriculum that relates like a slow walk and be like, okay, how's that? But, uh, but again, a slow walk for one horse is going to look completely different than a slow walk for right. another horse. Yeah. And I think, I think to take the conversation further in more detail, we would have to strictly define what each of us are meaning, or at least you and I are meaning by curriculum. Um, cause it's getting a little bit loose in terms of, um, well, so we, are we, are we definitely talking about the same, do we definitely have okay. the same ideas when we're talking about curriculum? So when I say curriculum, okay. I mean, can the horse walk, track, canter on a loose rein or collected? Mm -hmm. Can they yield the four quarters around the hind quarters, the, hor the hind quarters around the four quarters? Can they go laterally into the bend? Can they go laterally away from the bend? At, walk, trot, canter. Can they um, make changes of direction, walk, trot, canter on a loose rein? Can they um, stop hard and stop soft from all gates? Can they um, walk off slow, fast? Can they canter out of their tracks? Can they do a canter pirouette? Can they do a flying change? Can they lead into a horse trailer ahead of you? You know, I would say that's got to be um, part of the curriculum that I would want my horses to have, you know, lo load in and back out of a horse trailer. Um, Buck doesn't usually talk about that, but that would be something that, you know, they definitely should be able to cope with. I, on my curriculum, they need to be able to go sideways over a barrel. They need to be jump, able to jump over the barrels when I send them, if I'm on the ground. And they need to be able to step up onto something with all four feet. They need to be able to saddle at liberty. Those are the things. Those are probably, am I missing anything? It's a pretty good list. Um, Short walk, small walk, small walk would also so, be on the list. That is not. Kip every... says soft feel. And like, I'm like, duh. How can yeah. you do any of that without a soft feel? <laughs> but I guess, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't yeah. teach that as a separate piece of the curriculum. That's a lot of curriculum Curricul for most folks. folks. Oh, of course. And, and yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that's a lot. But then also, I think, you know, like Tom said, different headsets in the show pen are different you know, goals with the horse, is it, would if you could do all of that in the way you're thinking of it, the way you're picturing each of those movements, the w expectation you would have for all those movements, could you utilize that to shape a horse into, you know, say your goal was to, you know, this horse has a, is bred for cutting. Can I get them to work a cow given that I've done all that? Yeah, you got a really good handle on your horse. Your horse is very adjustable. They're settled mentally. You can utilize that to bring the best out of that horse doing this, that, or the other thing. Go jump, you know, start developing, um, you know, an event or something, you know, developing the jumping. So, um, yeah, and, 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 and then I guess you and I have talked a lot about stylizing the way that that ultimately looks. And, and to me, Tom's comment about, let's say, headset, which is stylizing. perfect. Yeah, you bet. Or, or just the way the gates look. Mm -hmm. You know, again, we talk about the difference between what you like and what I like. And that's why I think the, the word curriculum had come up before is because we're teaching the same curriculum to our horses. And yet the, the, the overall style that I want it to look like 
is a little bit pretty similar given so are, other people, but. Are, are you saying curriculum as the list? I mean, yeah. You're, you're kind of, so when I think curriculum, it includes the way of teaching. Oh. The, Oh, no. See, I wasn't thinking of that at all. See, that's, that's, yeah, that's what I think when, when you say. Really? Curriculum. The curriculum yeah. would be the way of teaching it? Yeah. Is that the, Kip, Jamie, I'm tiny Joe Rogan, according to my family. Jamie, can you look up the definition of curriculum, please? <laughs> oh, she's. Now she's going to pull out the dictionary on me and make I don't know. I, I don't yeah. know. That's, it no. doesn't matter what the definition is. Yeah. That, but I, that didn't occur to me. Yeah. And I think that's, how. that's where, um, I, I think that's where I. It's the process. I don't think, so I don't think of the curriculum as a process at all. That's, that's interesting. Volume. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. I can't hear you now. That sucks. Um, talk, Michael, try again. Oh, no. And you pop out. You, okay, yeah. See if, see if he leaves. <laughs> He's silenced. It's so... Gosh, Kip, can you please look that up? I'm just curious. I, oh, what if it wasn't for you guys? I would have been, would have been thinking of this all, you know, like obviously it's just the nitty gritty of what you teach would be the curriculum, not how you teach it. Michael, I think the details of the course is what Kip is reading off. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. The subject of a course. This was a great combo. Yeah, but uh, we're not done now, are we? Let's see if he re-adds. So what else, you guys, would be the the rest of that? I guess, and you know what it comes down to, I, I suppose, is like how you apply something is always the most important thing. You know, not not necessarily what you teach. And it, I guess it kind of makes it sound like I'm, I harp on the curriculum, but I don't think, I don't feel like I do. I use that as a bit of a framework as to like what I'm, what I'm looking. Yay. Good Lord. Sorry. <laughs> now I All can't right. see you. You're now back. I can't see you, but at least I can hear you. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I can hear you. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. So we all decided I'm right and you're wrong while you were gone. Right, right. I don't know about that. Did we Just get the kidding. Nicole, curriculum? good morning. You missed some great discussion. What did I miss? Nothing. Me trying Nothing. to okay. add you. Me trying yeah. to add you. And then keep reading the definition, I think, which is the course material. And I don't think that the way I was all I'm saying is the way I was thinking about it is that it is the nitty gritty of the course, not how you teach it. That's yeah. all. So, but what I was to saying, me, what, yours is the ad objectives of the curriculum, the way you were thinking of it. And, and you know, I don't know. Yeah, the syllabus. The... No. Yeah. Yeah. In a syllabus, there is a section that is course objectives. Yeah. Yeah. That's the curriculum. This is really irritating. Why can't I see you? <laughs> I'm, I'm just smiling at you. All right. That, we'll and I just have my go. listening face on. Um, never again will I forget to turn my phone on airplane mode. Aha. It was my own technical error. I apologize. That's okay. Right in the middle of a darn good conversation. <laughs> I know. So the other thing that I just mentioned while you were gone is just that just to be clear, the way that you apply, the way that I apply, the way that we apply our or, or, or head towards our objectives, 
just to be clear, to me is way more important than what we accomplish. And horses, it seems like, can can sure figure out what what we're after, whether it be style or um, even going against their nature in terms of learning movements, they will, so long as, you know, we're clear and we appreciate them. So you when you're, that, I guess. When, you, when you say the way you go about it, you're referring to the philosophy, the um, letting the horse search and find it, presenting things with feel, you know, several of these things that are just kind of a given in your mind. Correct? Is that you, what you're Of meaning? course they're you, a given. Why would I even bother? The, the way mm -hmm. that, because the most important thing, this is just to me, the most important, the, the most important value that I get out of being with my horses is that striving to be in harmony with them to communicate things and to be a part of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Striving to be in harmony with them brings me in harmony with, we could say God, the universe, like whatever, because when, when we, my horse and I have that, like what you read that I wrote, that feeling of connection of togetherness of, of binding together. That's what I want. I really don't care. The rest of it is just is essentially a side note. In my curriculum, the high school, the curriculum and the course frameworks. Aha, uh -huh, she's a high school teacher. Inclu oh, Mike, Mike, in my curriculum at high school, the curriculum is the course framework, including units of study objectives and standards. Hmm. Okay, so standards. So Mike, would you say then that standards would be, Mike, would you say that a curriculum is the list, Mike's very familiar with the list, the list plus some qualities? If that's the case, I got to stop talking about curriculum because there's no way. So Mike, you can answer that. Because there's no way that I can judge your standards. I can say, okay, your horse is doing a four quarter yield. Great. Okay. We can check that off the list of whatever reason we might be talking about it, but I'm not going to judge how exactly that horse feels to you. Forget it. I'm not doing that. The order of the list is also important. Yeah, but Buck and I disagree on the order of the list sometimes. But it is important. <laughs> but it um. is important. So how about how it feels? So pause there. <laughs> That's another discussion, um, which you're going to have, but it's going to take us away from this one. Uh, how you said how it feels to you, I'm not going to judge. But how it looks to you, I'm not going to judge either. For instance... A four quarter yield balanced, like sitting over the outside hind to the degree that you or I might be envisioning it, it is not required of the four quarter yield most people would consider part of their curriculum. And, and so when I'm just saying, when I say curriculum, I'm talking about the mechanics of the movement. I am not talking about the qualities of it. So maybe I'm using curriculum completely wrong because I just mean the mechanics of the list of movements and the mechanics of the movements. And then of course, the way that you apply that or, or the qualities that I want in that are going to be a thing. Good morning, Mary. <laughs> um, so you, you, you follow me? Like, so I never meant... How, how is the degree to which you're expecting engagement or the degree to which you are balancing the, the percentage of weight you are placing over, let's say, the outside hind in a four-quarter yield, not part of the mechanics? It's not part of the mechanics that I would consider to be the curriculum. They're, they're, especially because it's progressive. 
right? Like, so when yeah. I think of, of when, just when I'm talking about a curriculum, I want to teach my horse, let's say the four quarter yield, right? But mm -hmm. my horse says four quarter yield and the degree to which they are flexed, let's say laterally, and certainly how much they're sitting longitudinally, how much they're turned loose at the pole, how wide their withers are, how relaxed they are overall, is going to be super different on, on the first day that I teach it or the first six months that they're executing it. Then four years later, this is going to look like a completely different thing. So mm -hmm. I, when I was thinking about that element as a curriculum, as an element of the curriculum, I was not thinking about the qualities within it because as, even for it's evolving. We, yeah. Cause, cause all of those things are going to evolve as, as a horse develops mentally, emotionally, physically. And then of course the partnership between you and you and them spiritually. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, yeah. Mike, did he ever say, he would say, I would consider the list to be the curriculum. Each teacher may approach the teaching of it differently. Mike agrees with me. Mike got like teacher of the universe when he retired, by the way. Did All you right. hear the best, like famous basketball? No, football player. Football. F which football player? Thank God. Cam Cleland. Cam Cleland. Did you hear about that? Like on his sports radio show was talking about Mike and how Mike Stewart was his favorite teacher ever. No kidding. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Special dude. So he agrees with me. So I win you guys. So you win. So this, is, this is not an argument Indeed. at all of winning. Of course, this is just getting down to like, what are we saying? I concede. So do we need a different word than that? No, but I don't know if I walk away from this conversation necessarily much. I mean, I understand um, what you are thinking in terms of curriculum. I, there, so the goal of any element of the curriculum not and unless you say that's stylized the goal of any element of the curriculum is going to be different depending on your discipline depending on what your yes i'm nodding mm -hmm. okay good i um, would and toss to me curriculum and keep clutch af <laughs> we're not getting rid of clutch af let me who's that <laughs> this is so frustrating that i can't see and uh see the comments who said oh, that I'm sorry that's my own damn fault who said let's keep clutch af um i don't know what 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 is it's c h c l c h seven zero six two <laughs> You said her, you know her, you said her name. Sherry. Sherry, Sherry, yeah. hi Sherry. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah, can... okay, so we're ditching curriculum, seriously? No, we're not, no, we're not. I Just give me, that's fine with me, just give me a different word to use, because, because the point is, all I'm trying to say is the big long list of mechanics um, broken down into separate movements, and then within each movement are, are the mechanics of the movement. That's, that is what I mean, to, and it's important to be able to say that so that we separate the curriculum from the style and from the way that we develop them, those elements. Because how else, style, because- you're, we, you're separating it from the style and the way you develop it. Heck yeah, because, because that enables us to each practice our horsemanship individually. I, I, I don't even know how to talk to somebody about their horsemanship without being able to tease out those nuances because there are elements that like style, like 
the way it feels between the horse and the human. I I'm not a part of that. <laughs> when I'm talking to you, let's just say, when I'm talking to you, Michael, I'm not a part of those things. But as we talk about our practice, we can talk about those different elements. They have to be talked about separately. Otherwise, we're judging each other yeah. in a way that I have, no, I have no interest in that. Yeah, no, I, I agree there. I, I just know if I say four quarter yield and you say four quarter yield, I imagine a very similar thing comes to mind as the goal. Mm -hmm. If you say four quarter yield to someone who has a, okay, maybe the same curriculum, but a different goal in mind for, yeah, they just, four quarter yield means uh, they have an entirely different picture. Someone who, let's say, you know, Doug Jordan or someone who. Does he you know, have a four quarter yield in his curriculum though? Yeah. Okay. He, he did this neat little exercise where he kind of put the horse at about a 45 degree angle to the wall. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he'd lay a leg on a little bit ahead of the girth and on the, the inside of the arena and the horse would have to figure out how to sit back and come through at the four quarters. But it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, and he talked about where the, the, the balance needs to be or the weight, but it, that four quarter yield looked nothing like the four quarter yield I picture when I say because four. because it was only part of a four quarter yield or because because the weight was more forward or what was it that was so different yeah the w I don't know the weight was more forward yes I suppose I mean there wasn't the sitting down in that particular man maybe that's it maybe it's the um, where you said what it looks like today is much different when you're first teaching it than when what it will look like in four years, you know, that's one, say, type or version of a four quarter yield over against the four quarter he needs in, you know, the horse, you know, matching the cow and, you know, where you have more of almost, you know, a reach offset or, you know, there's different types of four quarter yield in his curriculum, but there is still a four quarter yield. But the fact still remains, if you say four quarter yield to someone other than, you know, let's just say the curriculum that, um, and the framework we're pursuing or we utilize, um, Utilize is a good word. Yes. It's, uh, I just came up with that word. I like it. Nice. Um, I'd be happy to use your word. We can, we can debate that word next time. Although it sounds like there's no debate. You're, there's you're no right debate. On. I love that. Right word. Because, because it's not the end goal. That's yeah. why. It's not the end goal. Duh. Why are we doing these movements? Why are we utilizing this curriculum? It's so that we can have what we want. Not so that yeah. we can do this. Like ridiculous yeah. to think that that's the, that is the that's pursuit. That's not the goal. Yeah. Ugh, no. Okay, so Sherry just says that she she was just talking about um, uh, Doug definitely teaching, definitely teaching the four quarter yield in its entirety. But I would say this is the thing: is like if if you're riding a cutting horse and you teach that cutting horse a four quarter yield that way. Now, if someone isn't teaching the mechanics of turning around the outside hind leg with the balance progressively getting more and more towards that, then we're not even talking about the same element in a curriculum, which is totally fine. But then we would say that that's, they're, they're not utilizing the same curriculum as we are. But if a cutting horse has been using a four quarter yield in the style that it works ideally for a cutting horse, I could hypothetically get on that horse and over time, 
adjust the style of that movement to be a, very, a much more dressage type, um, like much higher in the front. Uh, who knows, I could add more energy or, or less energy, at, you know, less speed across the front or, or whatever. I could stylize that to, to what I think is cool, but I don't need to reteach the movement because the horse has already learned that element of the curriculum. So then via my feel and what I think is cool and what I'm rewarding, I stylize that to whatever interests me. Okay. And to whatever degree that horse can do it. So let's just say Katniss yeah. is going, even if I say, okay, Michael, now she's going to be my little dressage horse, and, and which would be fun, you know, because we're going to progressively move towards that style, but she's never going to be Zorro. That's impossible. Yeah. yeah. And Zorro's but never going to put her, his belly to the ground in, in the same way, even if he could get after a bull, Right. I'm, I'm, I know you know this. I'm just saying, um, even if he could get after a bull just as effectively as she can get after a cow, mm -hmm. the overall style of it is going to look very different because of because of the way their body is. However, yeah. the movement itself, the mechanics and the movement and the mechanics of the movement are a consistent thing. Are and yeah, are a consistent thing. Thank God I'm talking to you again so that my English can get. Uh, <laughs> Ivy League. This I was is my... doing a lot more reading for a while and I yeah. felt my vocabulary increasing. It wasn't even a lot of reading. I haven't been reading again. I feel like I'm getting stupider. <laughs> I know. I just started again like 15 minutes a morning, you know, yeah. actually in a book. So, um, I'm reading. Um, Guess what book I'm reading? You'll never guess it. Um, g Golf is not a game of perfect. You would like it. I would, huh? Mm -hmm. I've been, I've been golfing. You'll be surprised to hear that. Begrudging. You should see my face right now. I, I wish I could. Begrudgingly. <laughs> I have a co couple friends here. Friends, of, you know, couples that my wife and I are friends with and they, they both golf. So my mouth is hanging open. I know they invite me out and I'm like, okay, this is the uh, social activity that we can all agree on I'm like I should put you guys both in the saddle which they're actually both interested in doing it just doesn't happen but yeah so I absolutely suck at it and I will forever because I have no interest Marky, in, I have no interest in perfecting it so what was the name of your book oh uh, golf is not a game of perfect but of course I'm not yeah. a golfer at all um yeah. I came across this because um it's just sports psychology yeah and horsemanship, we are in need of sports psychology, anyone who's pursuing the art of horsemanship more than anyone else, I feel like, or just as much as anyone else. Yeah. We could all use a weekly psychologist. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there you have it. I, I told you I wouldn't get into golfing and I still am not. However, I am swinging I was gonna the club. Because, you know, you're fired as my friend. That's <laughs> I've lost enough people to the game. <laughs> Uh, yeah <laughs> that's yeah so okay i don't know whether we've decided we're keeping curriculum not keeping curriculum okay, however so we utilize are is, utilize is a very good word it's clutch, clutch af, AF critical um okay what oh, what did you say you said God, it's not going to come back to me now we got too distracted by golfing um well the point of and i'll just one more time this is the last thing i'm just gonna say as my case for why saying curriculum is valuable it's certainly not valuable if it sounds like um we're promoting rigidity in any way that's yeah, bullshit definitely. we don't want that that's bad yeah. so i will nix it completely off the list if that's ultimately what what it ends up being but yeah. the, and i have my, never I have never um, myself had the impression in any way that that's what you were talking about. But that is kind of a starting point where when you say that, I think it can come across as rigid. So I always feel yeah. like I would want to um, 
kind of nuance it and explain, you know, it's, it's of course different in presentation and expectation of what the process will look like, like I said, right at first. So no question that it never meant rigidity in your mind. Well, um, I know that, but I mean, yeah. in terms of how I, I, I do care about how it comes across to other people and yeah. that's, and I think it's funny because it's like the opposite of that, because what yeah. I'm thinking again is if we get, you know, the, the pearls strung into, into line, then we don't have to judge the, the, all the stuff that goes around it. Yeah. I wish I could remember the one phrase you use that's a little bit like utilize, um, but it, it's not going to come back to me. We're too far afield from it. A far afield. Okay. Yes, that's not a golf term. In the weeds. In the In weeds the is both a server term and a golf term. A server? Yeah, like, like at the restaurant. If you're in the weeds, oh man, then you come back to the kitchen, you have too many tables, too many orders, you, you like just swimming up that you're in the weeds got it but also i, I think if kip i think it's a golf term that is utilized uh, uh, in the restaurant world <laughs> yeah okay but let's just go back we we're going to utilize the curriculum okay no i don't i don't even know what the rest of that sentence <laughs> never mind never mind <laughs> we're gonna utilize we're... the curriculum because it's clutch af yeah i i have, I have that's what i'm gonna tell buck next time dude we've decided <laughs> oh, we're gonna man. go ahead and use your your curriculum because it's clutch af yeah so i um i have a feeling this conversation is gonna continue to creep up because I'm not sure we're entirely on the same. Uh, I'm not sure I entirely have it organized in my mind. It doesn't matter if I'm on the same page as you, but um, yet that is kind of important to a conversation to understand one another. I understand how you were thinking about curriculum. I'm not understanding uh, or clear for sure on how we utilize the term <laughs> moving forward. Yeah, me either. We should we should talk more about it because, like I said, I'm happy to ditch it if um if it doesn't. Uh, are we doing this right. next Thursday morning? Yes, ma'am. Thursday I'm morning, six thirty a.m. Eight thirty a.m. Central. Yep. Um. No, I think it is a very useful term, um, and it, I think it's very interesting that we both had quite different ideas in mind um you know related to that term so that that was kind of a fun thing to have show up and now we know that we need to keep hashing this out until we well it is it is i think it's valuable because then you could say like hey is you know is this in your curriculum or like oh no i don't you know i don't use that i use blah 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 yeah fine it doesn't really matter like what we were talking about in one of our first uh, on one of our first shows we, we were talking about you know getting down to understanding what are you saying when you say the soft feel or what are you saying when you say lateral flexion or what are you saying when what a collected blah 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 could mean something to one person and something to another person you know and and that being part of part of the constant that you and i have done over the years all the time is we make mm -hmm. sure that we get these terms organized between the two of us so that we can have a more meaningful, deep conversation. And we won't have to revisit this eventually. Yeah. We'll just say it and use it. And then all of you guys will know what we're saying too. Yeah. So. <laughs> I hate the fact that you can't see my face. I know. <laughs> All it says is connecting and it has dot, 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 oh. dot. Really annoying. I really uh, hope it's recording it because I can see you. Uh, the audio <laughs> seems to be working. Oh. Well, and, is there is there anything else we need to know for the record for this week because we're over? Oh, geez. Well, there's lots of other things, but 
we spent a little time talking about the short serpentine and derivative. I got to do it on Bonnie the other day. That yeah. was exciting. Because I usually don't have horses that have enough forward. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was just going to say. I have two horses right now that are just very forward and so trying to utilize that. Um, <laughs> Clutch. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to utilize that is, uh, you know, it gives you it gives you ample opportunity to do the short serpentine and dug on. It is really a cool exercise if you have enough forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have enough forward. Yeah. So. Well, like I said, feeling anything um, obviously is such a gift. So, Laura, if you're still with us. There's another gal at the barn whose daughter is a couple years older than my kids, but she comes out and grooms chief and rides chief a little. And uh, she had seen something about, you know, the looseness in the pole. Um, maybe I'd mentioned it. I don't know, but she was thinking about it. And her horse is kind of a little stiff in her movement and um, whatever. So she, having heard this, you know, kind of took her horse's skull and tried to move it. And it was just, I don't know if she said locked or whatever. It was, it didn't move fluidly. And so she was leading her daughter around on Chief. And she said, I'm just going to try this. And she took Chief's skull and just kind of moved it. And she said, it was just so free. It was like, oh my gosh, I can, that's what it can feel like. So I think that's thanks to Clem and Flora that Chief's, Paul is that loose and supple so yeah that's throw that in there that's awesome maybe you send me maybe you send me that photo of uh lydia on cheap and i can put it in my stories for today okay the, the try, try to find. yeah well should we wrap it up for this week we probably should but i, I don't want to cut you off if you have anything else that's really no, I got some things rattling around in my head from, you know, a couple of weeks ago. That'll, if we, if we don't have anything to talk about, haha, at some point, <laughs> those will come up. Okay. So. Okay. Oh, I got to say my Bonnie thing just really fast that okay. because I don't want to forget this and I, and I also don't want to just hold on to it in my mind, but there's, so um, for those of you that the guys that don't know, I have this little mutt indian reservation pony uh and uh she's like 14 hands she's the pinto in my feed if you see her um she's five and um she's she's kind of hot naturally and um bossy af and um sorting out the feel between the two of us and she knew a lot of the of the curriculum so to speak but but the qualities of it are what we um i'm very dissatisfied with all the time happy with our progress but 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 speaking of obvious qualities so the difference um well i'll just say buck a lot of times talks about something being so smooth that it's like feels like a hot knife through butter um and then that's his that's his metaphor of course and, and it made sense to me for, for a long time. But when I was moving Bonnie around the other day, there was a viscosity to the feeling between the two of us that was much more like buttercream frosting. Um, frosting gets hard. Yeah. That's not the hard, that's top, stuff that I'm talking about, of course, but, but there was, there was, um, and, and I know there was a, I don't, there was not a disconnection in that. There was no gravity at the other end of the, of the connection. It's like, it's like, it, it's like it was sticky between the two of us but completely devoid of friction within our environment. Hmm. 
It's smooth, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Smooth is a good word. But it was it was like the thing between her and I was very different than the thing between her and I and our environment. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's where we become the the we and the horse become something different than we were separately, right? We're a thing. And mm -hmm. it's just new for her and I to have those feelings. The other thing I wanted to comment on, because you and I are always talking about these ideals, and we will be, of course, because we're, we are generally hunting this, the same sort of thing. Um, but it's not like we live in Nirvana. I just want to be clear yeah. about that, you know, <laughs> with our horses. It's I just- from Nirvana. What? I yeah. said, I live far from the Nirvana. Me too, that, yeah. But, I aspire you know, you to. Just, exactly, it's what you aspire to. And I certainly do feel like, just like the moment I was describing, um, you know, I get to feel uh, those moments of pure Nirvana, truly. Um, but they're moments. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. All righty. Well, smile to the people, because we can all see. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. talking to someone the other day and they said, smile, you're so serious. I'm like, oh, sorry, forgot to smile. So I feel like you're really good at smiling. That's good. Yeah, except for when you don't realize everyone's watching you and then it gets to be the serious thinking face, which um, I do too. Which is problematic when I can't see you. Or right, my... exactly. Look, 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 look good at to everything. see you. Thanks for your time. Yeah, you too, Sherry. Thanks for popping in. Thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, I guess these are going to be more like an hour and a half instead of uh, an hour. But uh, next week, 630, uh, Pacific Standard 830 Time, 830 Central. We'll see you then. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be heading down to Nathan's on Thursday, but I will be at home Thursday morning. Nice. Yes. All right. Okay, okay. everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.